Welcome to Module 9 of the Access Truth Resources. Throughout these tutorials, you're going to be introduced to a number of people working in different parts of the world. And you're going to hear some of their stories uh, that are in a range of church planning contexts from around the globe. We've put the descriptions into a framework of word, identity, life, and discipleship, the wild framework. But before getting into that, I want to introduce a friend of mine, Rich, who we've invited to present this material. We invited Rich based on his experience uh, in church planting and also in helping others. So, Rich, I wonder if you could go ahead and describe your experience. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here, Paul. Um, yeah, we, uh, my family and, and myself, um, served among a people called the Moy. Um, we I lived there in Asia Pacific with them for um, a good number of years, and um, before the team moved in to live with them in the early 2000, um, the Moi were pretty much unknown to the world, and um, they didn't have any gospel witness. Uh, they had never heard of Christ. Basically, had been living the way they have for for years, centuries, um, and it was uh, yeah, the Lord who brought a team together um, to share his word with them um, because he loved them, and even though they didn't yet know him, and um, in learning their language and, and culture, uh, it took a, a few years, and eventually uh, reached a place where we could begin to communicate God's word to them, and as his word says, it doesn't return void, and we saw that, and just played out in, in their lives as we had opportunity to see um, it communicated to them in a way they could understand. And um, we taught them foundationally starting in Genesis and, and gave them a good concept of who God is. And we had to um, actually come up with a name for the Creator, um, taking the uh, verb to create and we can make it into a noun. And so. What was that name? Anagisime. Yeah. Anagisme is the, the creator, and we taught them about the creator and his great love for them um, through um, creation and how he loved mankind and created um, this planet for us, and, and then the fall, of course, and, and they identified themselves with Adam and, and the fall and their need to have a relationship with him, and they wanted that. and. Uh, so we saw them, um, just a small group initially respond, and uh, only eight actually. Um, but we knew that was just the beginning, and so over the years, the Lord had provided more opportunities to um, teach His Word, and more people have come to know Him, and the church has really grown. Um, and today we have people who are carrying on a lot of the same responsibility that, that we had. Um, it's allowed us to see disciples made, um, not of us, but of Christ, and who love the Lord um, deeply and are willing to lay their lives down for one another. Mm -hmm. um, just um, amazing when you think about it, people who, they were actually incredibly selfish, self-centered, like, like we all are. Um, and when the Holy Spirit entered into them and they're walking with the Lord, they um, are quite selfless, and we've seen them just be radically changed and today they're you know, serving one another and they're reaching out to people who haven't yet heard um, within their own tribe and now actually in other places as well. So yeah, it's pretty, it's cool. pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, um, so now we have elders in the church and they're leading the church and um, our coworkers, Stephen and Carolyn, are still there um, finishing up the Bible translation and we hope to see that done shortly. And uh, myself, um, yeah, we've been able to now move on um, and I'm taking on more of a responsibility to help others who are endeavoring to do the same things and among other people groups. Outside of the, the Moy area. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, so helping as a consultant and kind of providing um, help to others who are looking to the Lord to do the same type of things, working and reaching unreached people groups. So 
you're now in a, in a situation where you have the opportunity to interact with teams doing church planting in a wide range of contexts. Would that be right? Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, we've had experience and seen the Lord do some pretty cool things among the Moy. Um, and we learned a whole lot along the way. And I think if we were to do it over again, we would do some things differently for sure. Um, but yeah, it's now an opportunity for us to be able to help others and maybe they might not make the, some of the same mistakes. Um, and it's been really neat to be able to visit um, some of the other contexts, ministry contexts, and um, be able to speak into some of those things at times and to learn a lot actually along the way, just seeing that they're not all the same. Um, the challenges are not all the same, but a lot of times the principles that we are learning along the way can apply to these different locations and um, be of help. So that's really our, our heart's desire as we, and my family and myself are involved in trying to help others to um, do well in the work the Lord's called them to. And, and I know you function as part of a team that's also doing that. So yeah. I, I think uh, you'll agree that, that Rich is well qualified to, to help us as, as we present this material. Um, just a little uh, introduction of myself to Rich. Um, we, my wife and I worked in uh, Papua New Guinea back, uh, we went there in the, the late 80s. And we had opportunity to go into a, a situation not all that dissimilar uh, from your own. Um, I know that the area you were in was very remote and uh, very, very cut off from the outside world. The, the situation we went into was a mountainous area that was cut off, not quite to the same degree. So the, the, the people we worked with that we lived among and got to know and really came to appreciate had had some exposure to let's say a form of Christianity and to a, a, a church of some kind, uh, but that had been heavily syncretized with their traditional animistic beliefs and uh, uh, a local cult that existed in that area, a prosperity cult that existed. So there was a, a very confused worldview picture. Their, their story, their narrative was a very confused one with a, a lot of different influences coming in. So we had the opportunity to to go in there and to, uh, like yourselves, to learn uh, their language, become, uh, understand their culture uh, to a degree, I guess, as much as we were able, living in a, in a small community up in the mountains and eventually to, to share God's word, his narrative, share his story, and saw a, a, a response, a, a tremendous response. And I know, like yourself, you feel the privilege of that, of, of being observers of things that God is doing. And yes, there's hard work involved and um, application and commitment, but really more and more you have this sense that you're observing, watching the things that God's doing through His Word. And uh, I, I hope, I trust that's something that's going to come out you know, through this material, through these resources, um, the, the combination of those things. But our our strong sense of dependence on, on God. Uh, I think you'd agree totally with that, right? Yeah. Um, so we had the opportunity to be involved in a, a translation project uh, to see a literacy uh, program developed and eventually to see those ch uh, a number of churches established uh, in that area and then reaching out even cross-culturally. And uh, today, there's, there's a number of church existing, churches existing there, and uh, we continue to go back and, and visit, but it's been some time, and so that's why it's great to, to have you here and giving your insights from your, your uh, very current in, uh, experience, and, and as you've been able to observe these many, many situations and work with a, a team that's doing likewise. So now we're going to turn and, and look at the, the content, give you a, a, an idea of what we're covering in this module. Uh, some of you may have already seen what is module seven of the Access Truth material. Um, and, it, and it may be a good thing to do that. Uh, this is in some ways based on that module seven in which we introduced this wild, uh, what we call the wild framework of word identity, life and discipleship, a way of looking at uh, opportunities, any context in which truth is going to is being shared, 
uh, through those lenses of, of word, identity, identity, life, and discipleship. And again, in this particular setting, we're looking at uh, cross-cultural, pioneering church planning settings. That's our focus in, in this particular module. Mm -hmm. In module seven, we presented that material in a, in a way that shows these principles uh, relate to any setting, whether that be in a Western, uh, well-church setting, uh, wherever it is, the same principles that we trust come out of God's Word are relevant. And now we're turning our attention to these particular kinds of contexts. Uh, the, you can find the, the, the framework, uh, the categories, and uh, the whole write-up on the Access Truth website in the wild uh, electronic version uh, of, the, of that book, of the outline. And uh, you can go on there and download it. In fact, I, <laughs> I recommend that you do as we go into this, this module. Uh, that would be really helpful for you to have that in hand. So let's, uh, let's just think about what uh, is in, contained in the framework. So let's, let's look at uh, Word first of all, the areas under Word. And each of these uh, have five different questions uh, in this particular form, five questions that we we can ask about any setting where tr truth is being shared, but again, in this context, about cross-cultural church planning settings where er, is our focus. So under Word, uh, we ask these questions. Are they able to access the Bible in a form that clearly and faithfully communicates God's revelation to them? A second question, are they having God's Word presented to them in a way that allows it to enter and engage their hearts at a worldview level. A third one, are they learning to give God's word its proper place and authority? Another one, are they growing in their ability to correctly understand God's word as his complete narrative with Jesus Christ as the heart of the story and its interpretive key? And finally, are they increasingly able to make use of God's word as he intends for his children and his church? So continuing on with the second part of um, the wild uh, framework, we have uh, identity and that also has five questions. And so I'll uh, go ahead and go through that. Um, the first one is, are they increasingly clear about and able to articulate their true identity? from God's perspective. Um, next one is, are they learning to see their story embedded in the larger narrative of the church, stretching back to Pentecost and forward to Christ's return? Are they growing in their understanding of the bonds that unite them to the global or local body under Christ as its head? And are they learning to view others according to truth and rejecting divisions biases and tensions that often define the wider society. And the last one is, are they growing in their understanding? So are they growing in their understanding of how to appropriately represent the Lord in their current spheres of contact and in others he might lead them to be involved in? Okay, and the, the third major area, the L in the wild, is, stands for life. So these are the, the questions, the points. Are they experiencing a deepening relationship with Jesus and learning to depend more completely on Him in different areas of their lives and gradually seeing their values and behavior change as a result? Are they gaining clarity about the true purpose for which they exist and are they increasingly able to identify those things that hinder their life in Christ? A third point, are they increasingly able to make good decisions based on their understanding of God's local and global purposes and to use their money and other resources accordingly? Are they learning to shape the form of what they do to serve whatever function they are convinced will lead to uh, the fulfillment of God's objectives? And then finally, under this area, are they growing in their commitment to reproducing the life they have in Christ? And are they equipped with the resources and skills to do so? And are they prioritizing opportunities where there's real need and hunger? Mm -hmm. And the last part then um, with the WILD framework is the D, um, discipleship. Are they seeing all their 
other ties, loyalties, and commitments being increasingly defined by their primary relationship as disciples of their master, Jesus Christ. Um, second one is, are they being helped to apply the general truth from God's word to their own specific real-life situation? Um, the third is, are they able to access uh, regular godly input and genuine friendships that intentionally help them along as they follow Jesus in their walk of faith? And four is, are they being encouraged to function in the areas in which God is gifted and given them abilities so they can develop in their service to him and his body. And the last part of discipleship is, are they being given access to Bible-based resources that adequately equip them to be involved in the function and outreach of the body in a local and global context? So that's a lot of uh, territory, but we'll be going in, in the future tutorials that we're going to be covering. We're going to go into the, those in some detail, so mm -hmm. we'll uh, we'll we'll... Don't, don't be concerned or remember all of that. We'll be uh, covering that and we'll be hearing from people uh, talking about those very things and their experience of seeing those play out and the challenges involved. But Yeah, look forward um, to that. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be fun, I think. Um, just to, to conclude this particular tutorial, though, um, I was thinking about the three primary images that we find in, in God's Word in the New Testament as as we see God uh, using these images or metaphors, if you like, uh, of his church. And I think it, it helps us, uh, as we've talked about already, Rich, of uh, picturing the church from God's perspective and then how we, uh, as his servants, as servants of that church, relate to that. So just a few verses and, and any comments you have, Rich, to, to uh, help us think this through. But uh, Ephesians chapter 2 uh, verses 20 to 22 says, Together we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, Paul said to the Ephesians, You Gentiles are also being made part of this dwelling where God lives by his spirit. Yeah, I think those verses are, are really important for us to consider when we were thinking about our place so as as we're participants in what God is wanting us to do in, in reaching this world and making disciples of Christ, we're actually disciples of Christ ourselves, and we're part of this building and actually making other parts of the same building. <laughs> it's a, a kind of a unique picture, but we're just part of it and carrying on that same thing that he wants to do and, and accomplishing his purposes here. And I, I think... One of the things we see here is this, this great care that God's taking with that process of building his temple, right? Uh, this comes out, doesn't it, in 1 Corinthians 3.10 where he says, Because of God's grace to me, and this is Paul, of course, speaking, I have laid the foundation like an expert builder. Now others are building on it, but whoever is building on this foundation must be very careful. Yeah, I think that's a, a, actually a, quite an important warning for us. Um, you see the, the care that God, he's very intentional on about how he's going about building his church. And he's given us the privilege to be involved with that. So he's doing all of this thinking and he has it planned out of how it should be done. And we have God's word before us and we can also see that he has this blueprint and we can follow that blueprint and we need to follow that blueprint and not just go about doing things our own way. Um, because uh, here Paul is saying that it's it's that critical and we need to be very careful. That, that yeah. real care we have to take and, and engage, I think, with our minds, right? Um, and understand, like engage the, the whole of us, including our minds, but it's not just our minds. Because um, God's not just this detached architect uh, kind of doing this project, but he's, he's fully engaged, he's fully committed and, uh, and, and then this sense of authority and connection he has with his church, which comes out in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 16 uh, and 17, uh, where he says, um, he makes the whole body fit together perfectly. So he's moving on. Th this is another part of the picture, the, the building, and now he's talking about the body. Mm -hmm. He fits that body together as each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow. So the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's a, also a really a neat picture that he's trying to use these different analogies to help us to understand that this is something that he's, he loves dearly and he wants us to be able to, to grasp that and he's using these different pictures and now we talk about the body and so each of us is members of the body, you and I and, and the rest of the church and uh, we get to participate again um, in seeing this body develop and grow and come to maturity. Yeah. And that, that sense of partnership that's, that's in this great project that he's involved in. So our minds, uh, I think there we see, you know, a reflection of, of his authority. And, and we have to be involved in our, our wills, our commitment. Um, but it's not just like a detached thing either because Christ is emotionally invested in this mm -hmm. whole thing. And, and the picture, would you uh, read that uh, for us, those, those verses, Rich? Um, they reflect that. Too. Yeah. So in Ephesians 5, uh, 25 and 26, it says, For husbands, this means love your wives, just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. So another picture of the body. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then in Revelation, then, as we look to the, the fulfillment of all of this, um, he says, Let's be glad and rejoice and let's give honor to him. This is the, the great vision that he has. For the time has come for the wedding feast of the Lamb and his bride has prepared herself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for us, that, that's, our emotions are involved too, aren't they? And uh, so we've got that, that sense of our, our intellect and our wills, that commitment and the love that, that he would, he would uh, create in us for his body, his church. And I think we'll see that reflected in these, uh, these clips of people who are, who are giving their lives to do the thing, to be involved in the thing which, which Christ himself, our master, uh, the task that he left to us um, the, for his church that he loved so much and he invested, gave so much of it.